you can run thrilling exploration in Albert Rodeo with Fog of War. Here's how. We'll show you how to add fog to buildings, add fog to caves, and run your session. Before you start, you'll need to open a room in your Albert Rodeo account, and then open a scene in which you want to add Fog of War. Fog of War, which we'll refer to simply as Fog in this video, is a very useful tool to hide parts of your scene from your players. For example, you can use Fog to hide areas of your map that players haven't yet explored, and then reveal each of them as they're being investigated. I'm going to add Fog to all of the interior spaces of this building and this cave system for my players to explore. First, we'll select the Fog toolset and check the state of the actions on the right hand side of the tool divider. When you want to add opaque fog shapes to the scene, these are the recommended settings. Fill fog off and fog cutting disabled so that you can add opaque fog shapes onto the map. Fog preview disabled so that you keep your special GM view through the fog. And multi-layer disabled so that you can't make any overlapping fog shapes. Let's set the fog style action to be purple for maximum contrast during this tutorial, but you can choose any colour. Firstly, let's add fog to buildings. There are four modes with fixed geometries on the left-hand side of the fog tool set, and I can quickly and easily add fog to the building by selecting the rectangle mode and drawing over each room. Grid snapping is enabled by default in the grid controls popover, and in the settings popover my grid snapping sensitivity is not zero, so you'll see that each shape is snapping to the grid lines. This helps ensure that these rectangular fog shapes will match their rooms exactly and will be truly adjacent to one another with no gaps between them. As I add these shapes, they cover those rooms with transparent purple because I'm the GM and I can still see what's underneath. Now that all of the simple rooms have fog, we can look at the odd shaped room here. Remember that the fog system will discard any areas of a fog shape that overlap another. So after I drag a simple rectangle over this room, its lower left corner is removed, leaving behind the perfect shape. This makes forming more complex fog shapes very quick and easy once all of the neighbouring fog shapes are in place. If you make a mistake, you can use the undo button in the right hand toolbar, or Ctrl Z on the keyboard, or you can just select the problem shape and delete it. While I'm still using the geometric shapes, I'm going to add a circle on top of the compass rows, finding the right size first before holding the Alt key to reposition it. I'll also select that shape, and cut it with the scissor tool in its contextual toolbar so that it stays visible when everything else is fogged. For this fog shape, I'm going to switch to the polygon mode and mark all of the corner points. I'm using the control key to temporarily disable the grid snapping here, and also using the space key to temporarily allow me to pan around while I'm still in the middle of placing my polygon points. Once I've set all of the corners for this shape, I can either click on the finish button to complete it, or press the enter key, and the fog system will discard any overlapping areas. Next, let's add fog to the cave system. Of the two freehand modes on the left-hand side of the fog toolset that aren't constrained to any fixed geometry, I could use the polygon mode here and loosely follow the walls, but the tunnels don't really have any straight section, so let's undo that. And switch to the brush mode. This tool automatically places points along a line and then smooths the corners to give you flowing curves, and it completely ignores grid snapping, which feels appropriate for these more organic areas. You can see that any overlaps in the tunnel shapes are also discarded, so it's very quick for me to mark out the four sections of this underground layer. If you make any mistakes as you're drawing your fog shapes, you can use the undo or delete functions that we saw earlier. Of course, you could zoom into the map and put more detail into the fog walls if you want to, holding the space key to allow you to pan as needed. It's really just a matter of personal preference. Finally, let's run our session. Now I still want to keep the open air part of the map visible because that's where the party will start their exploration, but I also want to hide the extent of the caves. I'll enable fill fog, which floods all of the areas that don't have their own fog shape, but you'll see that the compass rose is still visible because it has its own circular shape that we left in its cut state. To do the same for the outdoor area, let's draw one large rectangle and select it, and also set it to be cut. That's perfect. Lastly, I want to change the fog colour back to black, ready for my players to join. We're now ready to add all of our tokens, notes and other details to this scene, ready for the session. If you leave the quick selection mode enabled, running the scene is as simple as clicking on a fog shape and cutting it when your players enter that area. Alternatively, you can hold the Alt key and click on a fog shape to toggle it between its uncut and cut states. And if you need to clear multiple areas together, you can Alt-click-drag across all of them. 
Additionally, the dynamic fog extension can reuse all of these static fog shapes to provide real-time lighting. See the dynamic fog tutorial for more information. And that's it! You now know how to add various fog shapes and the fill fog layer, and reveal what's under those fog shapes quickly and easily in-game. To learn even more about these fog features, our next video will be mastering fog of war with techniques like trimming and joining fog shapes, and cutting fog on the fly. To learn more about Albert Rodeo, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or click another video to keep watching.